Tavern Show, a show developed around building community around Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, a game currently in development by Visionary Realms. And tonight I am absolutely thrilled to have Minus from Pantheon Plus on the show. Uh, he has been a real inspiration to me um, and uh, helped develop this show. And he also developed the new logo that we have. So thank you very much, Minus, for that. I really, really appreciate it. Um, no problem, man. Glad to help. Excellent. So uh, um, as many people probably know, uh, Minus uh, developed the Pantheon Plus website as well as the Pantheon Plus you show and Pantheon Plus Rewind um, of all of those. Um, but the first question I'd like to ask you of the evening is since this is the Terminus Tavern show, um, what beverage, if any, are you drinking tonight? <clears throat> I, I hate to say, I wish I had something a little, a little better to, uh, to bring on to the Tavern show, but I'm kind of going with the, the old natural here, the Michelob Ultra. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's been the the healthy choice um but if it was my choice right now i'd probably have a, a guinness draft or uh there's a there's a german beer that is probably my favorite called franzis connor and i love uh franzis connor it's probably my favorite beer of all time it's a hefeweizen so in spirit i'm drinking that but uh right now make a little ball dress so. awesome excellent well tonight i'm drinking a uh oak town uh brown ale um I would offer it to you, but um, I don't know if you can see that, but I know how you feel about bears, so. Oh, geez. <laughs> I just had, couldn't help myself. Oh, but, geez. We got the bear alcohol going. <laughs> already. <laughs> so, uh, what games have you played previously? Yeah, I guess we're, we're going to stick into the MMORPG genre here, because if not, we're going to be, we'll probably be here all night, so. Um, <laughs> So uh, I actually went through like I wanted to get the list because I talk about it all the time. I think this is the list. So uh, EverQuest, um, Fantasy Star Online, uh, Final Fantasy XI. Um, I tried that a few times and didn't stay ever too, too long in that one. I actually played Maple Story very briefly. Uh, EverQuest 2, World of Warcraft, 14 years. That's my most extensive play. Um, City of Heroes, Guild Wars. Uh, D and D online, very brief jump into Age of Conan. Um, Champions online again, very briefly. We I played a lot of Final Fantasy XIV: A Realm Reborn. Um, it's interesting because that game's probably uh, I don't know. That might be my second most played. I may have played that more than EverQuest at this point because I had spent a couple years playing it. And then I go back. Um, Star Trek online, very briefly. I played a lot of Rift. Played a lot of Terra. Uh, played a ton of Blade and Soul, uh, a little bit of Guild Wars 2, Secret World, a lot of Arc Age, very briefly played Defiance. They actually list Marvel Heroes as an MMORPG. It was kind of more of an ARPG MMORPG, but I played that until they shut that down. Um, a brief stint in Neverwinter and ESO, Wildstar. Um, recently played quite a bit of Desert, Black Desert Online, and I played some Albion Online. So I think that that is pretty much all the different games that i played so that's quite an extensive list <laughs> <laughs> to, to say i'm a fan is uh is definitely uh undercutting it i guess you'd say so with um having played all these uh mmos what drew you to pantheon yeah um so it was uh, i started uh following it in september of 2018 um, and I literally, and I, I've told this story a little bit before, but I typed in Google cause I was so frustrated with how things were going. Just, um, I, I am bored like MMORPG <laughs> and, uh, I found a lot of information about Pantheon. And of course, you know, what drew me in was, um, you know, Brad's name being on it, you know, first and foremost, I think that a lot of people that discovered it early in the days, that was probably a big reason why they jumped in and were. We're sort of into the game. So, um, yeah, I would say Brad's name being on it, uh, memories of how much I loved EverQuest. Um, some of the people that I associate with, like Haya, was a really big EverQuest fan. So I knew that, that I could possibly pull him away from WoW. 
um, <laughs> with the name of Brad McQuaid, right? And uh, the more and more I looked at it, you know, the more I was really getting excited for it. You know, um, I'm a big combat fan. Um, I'm, I like grind. I like camps. I like open world. So all that stuff really kind of drew me in. Checked off all the boxes for you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so what inspired you then to create the Pantheon Plus website? Yeah, yeah. so it, that actually started slightly before um, before Pantheon actually uh, oh. became like part of it. So <laughs> without getting into a ton of detail, the end of my WoW playing, um, so we were running a guild, which we'll talk a little bit about later, probably more in depth, but we were running a guild. And one of the things that I prided myself in, as well as my officer team and my leadership group, was that you know, we were really good at teaching anybody um, how to play to the level they wanted to play. And mo most people want to play an MMORPG. They want to be good. Nobody wants to play an MMORPG just be really bad at their class. <laughs> you know, this, this whole casuals versus hardcore thing, that there's the one commonality is nobody wants to be bad. But some people don't know how to to get better. And that's right. that's not a knock on them, right? Like, what tools are there? What websites should I be using? How do I assess my own skills? Like, it's not always easy. Um, and I thought we were able to take that that thought philosophy and to help people from any skill level, from someone who's never raided before to somebody who was a seasoned veteran to go to that next level. You know, we were what we would consider a casual yet progressive guild. We were casual outside of raid time. And when we raided, we were serious. Mm. And we we ahead of, cur ahead of the curve to every piece of content we ever played, um, which was what our goal was to beat all the heroic raids. And there were people who've never raided before that were terrified in doing it. Right. So long story short, we we started to think of this. Well, you know, we would love to help more people understand their classes better. Mm. Um, in WoW. So we took a lot of the guild officers and we we tried this strategy that didn't work out. And we called it WoW Plus. And we wrote guides that were alternatives to the cookie cutters that were out there, kind of trying to drive this message of, you know, there's more than one way to play WoW. And I was evidence of it. I always played builds that weren't recommended builds. And I would beat people um, <laughs> that were following class discords or theory crafters who this is the only way to play. And it led to a lot of relationship building. Um, there was a very negative pushback, like literally, uh, huh. no joke. We got death threats oh. on our website. We got death threats for opposing class discords. We had the mobs turned on us. Um, we had, uh, you know, getting into some crazy detail here. We actually got an email sent to one of my female lead officers that like gave her instructions on how to kill herself because she played a build that was different from what the class discord said they should play. And it's just, it, was, it was heartbreaking because she was afraid to even make any more content because of how rude and how cruel these people were because they wanted everyone to follow their lead. And it was interesting because we dug in and found out that like the sim simulator that is used, SimCraft, yeah. um, they actually uh, stopped programming unpopular skills, which is kind of crazy. So these unpopular skills people were using were not simulating correctly, whether they were better or not. They just weren't popular. So SimCraft actually never... Um, wanted to update these abilities because they were low use ability, which was interesting. And we actually partnered up with a, a group called Ask Mr. Robot, who also was getting a lot of community shade because their simulator was better. <laughs> and it, it <laughs> disproved a ton of these theory crafters. So everybody hated on them and attacked them brutally. So we actually teamed up with them and started writing articles and started kind of going at this philosophy of one way to play. And it was, I wasn't even playing the game anymore. I was constantly on the offensive, like digging into all this crazy stuff about like just how horrible these people were and the mob mentality and the power that they had. You know, these class discord leaders on WoW, believe it or not, had actually infiltrated the two major sites of Icy Veins and WoW Heads and they started writing the class guides. So literally, if you went to Icy Veins, WoW Heads or the class discord, it was the same person. So oh, it was wow. the same person telling everybody how to play the class. And, and they were using a simulator that wasn't fully programmed. It was like, I could go on forever. I'll stop. But basically, when that was a failed experiment, we took a lot of what we learned about that. And when Pantheon being a newer game, we wanted to go into this whole, the, the base philosophy was get people to know about Pantheon, um, help content creators get more recognition, 
do what we can, whether it's creating logos, giving them a place to post their articles, retweeting. But the, the thing was, is that if we weren't credible, then who are we to push anybody, right? So we started with a, an, an ability for us to start making content, which I was awful at. I'm still awful at. But <laughs> we were so bad if you look at some of our old content, because it was never meant to like be a lasting thing that we make content. Mm. It was, let's, let's get Pantheon Plus to be important. Let's get knowledgeable. Let's make ourselves as well known as we can to be a positive influence. And we'll see where it goes. And if we can use what we gain to push other people or to highlight other content or to build a team, then that's what we're going to do, right? Right. Um, and that was the whole philosophy behind it. And then a lot of what we created with the WOW strategy is going to eventually play into Pantheon. We want, uh, we want people to be able to create their own guides. Um, we want anyone that enjoys a class to be able to make their own guides. You can go on and read how they play. And you can try different play styles. We do not want to pigeonhole how to play for any class. But we want to give people to explain how they play. So maybe you can try it, see if you like it, try to experiment with it. So Pantheon Plus is starting right now as a media, as like a media website to learn everything you want to learn about Pantheon. Right. But what it's going to become is a place where people can, can, be, can become content creators. They can manage their guild. They can um, create a guide for leveling, for crafting, for a class, for a raid. Whatever they want to do, we want to make all the tools so that people that don't have the tools to do these things can do it and they can make a name for themselves and they can be part of the community. And really everything we try to do is based around that community matters mentality. We want to make sure that is the reality between everything we do has to stem from that. And that's where we kind of check and balance ourselves in a big way. That's awesome. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. It kind of, that leads into something that I've been thinking about a lot as well. Um, you know, with Pantheon being, you know, sort of a more of a, for lack of a better word, old school approach to game, to MMOs, as a, sort of a community leader and a, and a guild leader, how would you onboard someone that is unfamiliar with, with sort of the play style that Pantheon presents? It's a great question. And I got to be honest with you, this may make people unhappy to hear this from me, but I do think that it's, I, I do think that Pantheon is going to be something new. This is not going to be, in my opinion, a rehash of EverQuest. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I think that there will be, see, I hate, I hate the fact that a, a dictionary term, modern, has been transformed in this genre to be a negative word because mm. it's, it's a word that defines time period. That's what I'm talking about when I use modern. Right. EverQuest is not a modern game, but you can have a modern version of EverQuest that has nothing to do with what WoW has become or what the Korean MMOs have become, right? For sure. The game has to be modernized to society. And there's a lot of things that that means. It does not mean quality of life. It just means new. Right. Um, like, look at, like, look at World of Warcraft Classic, right? That blew up when it came out. It's not nearly as popular anymore. If Pantheon comes out and it's just a rehash of something people have done, it's not going to last. It has to be... There has to be a reason that I want to play Pantheon instead of EverQuest or Pantheon instead of World of Warcraft or Pantheon instead of you know, insert MMORPG here. And those are defining factors that mean that the game is going to be something new. It's going to add some new elements to the genre or enhance elements that we liked. So when it comes to onboarding, you want my honest opinion? I think World of Warcraft players are going to have an okay time. I think that that's been a misconception. You know, EverQuest players have been playing the same game for 20 years. and the game at this point for them is not very difficult, right? Yeah. It's, you know, everything. Yeah. Um, they can max level I, in a day or so. Yeah. So I personally feel like that, you know, the experience that we had, what was hard about EverQuest is when we started playing it because we didn't have any clue what an MMORPG was. We didn't have any clue what we were supposed to do. We just didn't know. Right. And no matter what game is made today, you're going to have knowledge of how to play the genre so while the game's going to be punishing it doesn't i don't think it's going to be super hard for people to get into as long as pantheon is driving the group message right, right. Like if i was going to onboard a friend for example who had never played i'd do it through grouping with them mm. i'd do it through getting a group ready and bringing them along for the adventure and going and having fun so i think that's the element that will maybe be a little different is the fact that you're going to need a group for a lot of content there's a lot of games that you know you're running out soloing the level up just to get to that end game that would be the difference i think yeah, well, that makes total sense to me. I mean, I definitely think that Pantheon's going to grow a lot through word of mouth. 
I, I think that there's going to be a lot more. I think that the, the term of this game being a niche game mm. is going to fade. Yeah, I really do. Yeah. Um, I think that this game has potential to be commercially successful, but within the realm of what it's trying to do, right. not commercially successful to be like what's out there, but because it's different. I mean, look at Dark Souls. Like Dark Souls is not, you know, basic commercial for an action game, hmm. but it has commercial success because it's different. Right. And I think Pantheon, you know, I'm not trying to relate it to Dark Souls, but can be its own game and still see commercial success. I really do believe that. Um, so uh, in creating the, so I want to, um, Well, from so moving on from the the website, then in creating the Pantheon Plus show, what was the um, you know impetus behind that? For Pantheon Plus, you? Yeah. Sorry, um, I keep abbreviating. Yeah, no, you're good. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. I listen to. I'm a big sports fan. We were actually talking about that before we um, before we got on here together, and uh -huh. uh, I listen to sports talk radio all day. Um, I have Sirius XM. I have like the lifetime subscription I bought when I first came out and I listen to mad dog sports radio and the whole premise of mad dog sports radio is that every single show does long segments of colors. Right. Mm. And I sat there thinking like, well, this is really cool. Like, you know, one of the reasons people love this station is because you can call in. And the funny part is, is like, you know, when people are calling in, they want to hear themselves, right? They'll go back to hear themselves or like they'll call into a radio station and they'll have it on in the background in the radio. And the host is always like, Hey, turn the radio down. Right. right. Like, you can go back and listen later on demand. I'm guilty. Um, of so that. people <laughs> want to be a part, right? Like yeah. someone calling into a sports talk radio show is done because, you know, I just laughed at Theric saying it'll work on my Jersey. Act. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Pittsburgh. Um, but you know, like people, that call into that type of a show, they want to be part of the show. And, you know, that's community, right? So like if, if people are part of Mad Dog Sports Radio, they call in often, the hosts know them, they call different shows, they become part of the community. So here I am sitting in my car, driving to and from work, and I'm like, man, like, it'd be really cool to have something like this, but how do I do it? Right. And it, and it wasn't easy. And there's obviously a lot of risk. You know, someone could come on the show and just start being profane or idiotic and you know, we have a, a way to quick pull them, which is why we also sort of talk at the beginning that, you know, viewer discretion is advised because it's the internet. Mm. But the other thing I've found too is in, and I don't mean this in a negative way, and I know it might come out that way, but there's a, there's some people in the community that are very negative and harsh. And we've convinced some of those people to come on the show. But when they come on the show and they're talking in voice and it's them, they're a much different person. That aggression that can come through in typing um, isn't there because you're having a human conversation. And I think people that are willing to put their voice onto a show are, are more willing to have a conversation. And one of the things that we wanted to make sure of is that it's not the minus opinion show. You're going to hear my opinion, but the show's a community show. So it doesn't mean that people have to agree with me. A lot of times, even my co-host doesn't. And I think <laughs> that showing that, you know, we can have a show that has different opinions that we as a community can talk through these things and we as a community can can debate, listen, and then shake hands at the end of it is a huge part um, of what makes the show work. And and I'm shocked how well that's happened. And and it's it's been a been a crazy ride. It came together way better than I ever thought it could. Awesome. What are some of the biggest lessons you've learned during the show? Uh, um, <laughs> there's a lot of mistakes I keep making, uh, which is you know, not, I need to plan out more often. <laughs> um, like last month, uh, you know, Nafel was like, Hey, let's do a Pantheon plus this week. I'm like, uh, okay. It was Tuesday. So no prep. Um, and we want to do two shows a month. We want to do the, the dev show and we want to do like a topical show. And I just didn't have anything planned. So it's, you know, we, when we planned out, Theric and I, um, planned out like the climates and atmosphere week, or I'm sorry, month. That was awesome. Like there was just so much juice in the team mm. at Pantheon Plus. Like everybody was really excited because we were kind of focused on this one thing and we were all doing our pieces on it. Um, that was a lot of fun. I think that I've learned that doing things like that and coming up with like a monthly topic is something we should probably do more often. Um, and just, you know, prepping a little more. Uh, sometimes, 
I won't lie, like it, it's tough to do a weekly show or even if it's bi-weekly or twice a month or whatever we're doing. Um, sometimes, you know, you don't want to repeat yourself. You don't want to say the same things all the time. So coming up with a fresh topic is difficult. Um, you know, if we're provided with content, it's easy. But, you know, I think that writing out some things to plan ahead would probably be something I could be a lot better at. <laughs> so much is on the fly sometimes. Yeah. Well, along those lines, then, what sort of uh, kind of month? I, you also did the whole class uh, reveals sort of you know, changes when the new website came out, which was really amazing to see the differences and how you approach that and put it out. Do um, you have some ideas of what topic you might tackle next? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm just kind of spitballing here, but I've, I've given a lot of thought of putting out some... Um, you know, some videos on the climbing system and why I think that's important. <laughs> We've, you know, one of the interesting things that's happened with Pantheon Plus is we went, we were kind of like you, like we were a, a drinking show. Right? Uh-huh. <laughs> Get together with your buddies um, and just talk, yeah. right? Like it was very nonchalant. That's really what we wanted to be when we started. Um, but as the course of time's gone on, we, we find a lot of value in some of our informational stuff we do and some of our breaking news stuff we do. Sure. Like we, when we broke the news on the death penalty, when Joppa brought it out on discord randomly late at night, um, you know, or when we did again, the climates and atmosphere stuff or the like classes for me, yeah, that's easy. Yeah. Um, my number one thing about MMORPGs is, is class play. Um, I am just massively enthralled with the difference in classes, how they play, how they function together. So I could make class videos all day, but I don't think people always want to hear about that. Um, so it's really just, we went from this, like the rewind is very conversational, but it has some structure and it's sort of a, a pre-produced show, right? Because it's recorded and put out there. Then we have our live show, which is very spon- spontaneous, just very, very spontaneous. And then we've started to integrate in being more factual so that people who are watching us aren't just part of the conversation. We can give more information. Um, and that's been, that's been fun. That's, that's the most challenging content to make because you really got to, dig and you got to get all the information you can because you want to present it in a way that you're being very full with the information so people can can understand it right so like we did climates and atmospheres like we didn't want to miss anything we had to dig through old streams we had to take a lot of notes we had you know google docs going back and forth so it's it's a very intensive process because we want to provide accurate information but you know in the past pantheon plus wasn't a place for i'm going to be completely honest it wasn't a place for super accurate information it was a, a place for banter but we want to like as we're building our team, you know, we, we've really expanded the team. We have Theric, obviously, who's my right-hand man. I couldn't do anything without him at all. Um, we have Drac, who is just insane in the community. We have Nafel, who just joined, who uh, brings like a huge wealth of knowledge, specifically around crafting. So we, we don't want Pantheon Plus to be like the Minus show. I say that a lot because like, I am totally 100% don't want that. We want Pantheon Plus to be a place where you can find a content creator you like that maybe talks about lore. It maybe talks about classes. It maybe talks about crafting. We want to to be a little bit of everything, so that if you hate minus, we can still provide you with something <laughs> positive, right? Um, and trust me, there's enough of those people out there, so I get it. Um, but we we want to we want to have varying opinions, varying topics, and varying things for people to find interesting and maybe discover. I, I was never a big lore fan until Theric turned me onto it, right? Like so, now I'm into it. I can't wait for his videos. And I don't say that because he's part of my team. I say it because I'm legitimately a fan. So, well, that's one thing I do love about this whole community is how everyone has their own perspective, and then when they when you present it and you learn about it, it just draws you in, and it gives you another thing to be passionate and interested in. Yeah, uh, I find I, I'm constantly finding that myself. Um, you know the things you did about the classes. You know, I have been so focused on just a couple classes, but then. Seeing them all presented in in such detail, it draws me into you know thinking about oh well what about this class or you know all the lore and and reading the fan fiction that's out there all those different elements come in and it just kind of builds the whole world you know it kind of goes back to that idea that Brad had you know building worlds not games and the more that everything is rounded out. The, the more it becomes a real home and a world instead of just a game that you're playing. So thank yeah, again. Yeah. And just to add on to that, you know, um, 
I, I get it. There's a lot of impatience out there. There's a lot of people who've been following a lot longer than me, right? Like two years is nothing compared to people who've been following for five, six, seven years, right? Kickstarter era. Um, but like the biggest thing I would tell people is don't discount what we have now without the game out, like the positive experiences that we've had already. Like, don't discount the community benefits that we've all had because, like, th- there's so much value that I've personally gained just by doing what we're doing and just by interacting with people and finding friends and talking MMORPGs. We're part, you know, with all the differences that all of us have in the community for Pantheon, at the end of the day, we actually are very similar, but we're nitpicking differences. Like, our overarching similarities are amazing. It's like joining a club <laughs> yeah. that everyone's kind of like you. But yeah, okay, like, if you like football, I'm a Cowboys fan. There's a lot of people that hate the Cowboys. <laughs> but we can unite in the fact that we're football fans. Right. And the we're taking not just gamers and uniting, we're uniting MMORPG fans. And what's cool about that is there's so many MMORPG fans that have just these crazy, amazing stories. I've heard so many cool stories since becoming part of this community. And, like, I just urge people, like, yes, we all want to play. And, and a lot of people look at me and they're like, oh, you're always positive. You know, you're the white knight. Blah, 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 blah. No, I'm just, I'm just happy to be a part. Like, I'm not going to look for negativity just to be negative. Like, I don't find value in it. This is a hobby, right? This is something I enjoy. Why would I want to tear it apart for myself? Like, it's so fun meeting someone like you. Like, when, have we, when would me and you have ever met? If Never. it wasn't for <laughs> you know, honestly. Right? <laughs> but yet last night we're in tears yeah. playing humans fall flat together with the guild, literally in tears, just <laughs> crying how funny it is. Oh and, and how can we not credit visionary realms and Pantheon for that community and, and people who are missing out on that part of it? I urge you like, like take advantage of the time that we have to build a community until we play Pantheon. And and that will make everyone's lives a lot better, in my opinion, who are frustrated. And I get it. Like, I get it. I want to play just as much as anybody. I promise you all that. I want to play so bad. <laughs> um, but I'm enjoying this as much as I can while we wait. Right. Excellent. So, speak, um, so over the, you know, the time that you've been doing the show, have you noticed any change in the community? Or as the community? You know, that, that, have well, you it's growing. It's yeah. definitely growing um, and it's going to continue to grow. Um, you know, the, it, it's an interesting question. You know, obviously there's a lot that changes when you meet more people. Um, so you learn a lot more about people and that changes every day, right? Like that's an everyday thing for me. You mm-hmm. know, aside from making content, you know, we're networking, we're talking to people, we're, we're building relationships. That's a huge part of what Pantheon Plus is. It's not just the content. There's, there's a lot underneath it. So for me, like that's changing all the time. Um, I would say that we have this roller coaster, right, of ups and downs. I think right now, um, some would say that like on Facebook, which is a very harsh critic, um, Reddit, which is a very harsh critic, we're kind of in a down period where mm. people want more info and want to see more. Right now, at the same time, like in the communities we're part of, we're in an uptime because people are talking a lot more and they're coming up with ideas, and some people are really excited about what they're seeing. So there's, there's definitely these ebbs and flows within different communities and the communities kind of lend themselves to different attitudes. Um, but I think the ultimate thing is, is when a lot of information is poured out or like there's streams of video content, like everybody sort of starts to come all together for a bit until the different patience levels of the different communities start to change. So I think it's really, again, just this ebb and flow of like information flow with patience um, and then depending on the social media group that people are part of. Total sense. Um- Going back to the Pantheon Plus U show, um, knowing that um, developers of Visionary Realms have started watching the show, did that change your thinking or approach to content at all? It did it. Well, no, it's never changed the content. I will tell you guys that um, every piece of content we do is Pantheon Plus devs or no devs. Um, it's stuff we believe in. It's, it's done with integrity, again, to that community matters. It, we're, we're saying what we want to say. Uh, my guests are saying what they want to say. The the people who come on from the community are saying what they want to say. I would say that when it when the first time that I think it was um, Ronick was one of the first to pop in, and then Joppa, mm-hmm. and I think that when they first started popping in, I was very nervous um, because I would say I'm far from professional. Obviously, like this, I'm learning as I go, 
Um, like I never knew how to do any of this, you know, um, two years ago, maybe even less than that. You know, I didn't know how to make videos. I didn't know how to stream. Um, I didn't know nothing. Right. So I'm becoming more confident. And I would say that now when they're on, it's fun to interact with them and take shots and joke with them. And they're joking back. So there's a much more natural feeling now. Sure. But when they first started watching, it was definitely nerves. Like, oh man, like I don't want to mess up. <laughs> but now it's, I mean, they know me enough now and, and they've been very fortunate. Uh, they've been very, I've been very fortunate to uh, be given the privilege to speak with them pretty regularly, mm -hmm. um, whether it's just in fun, you know, fun passing stuff or it's, uh, you know, actually Pantheon development speak or talk or testing or whatever, whatever part I've been in. Right. Um, so I think that I feel very comfortable with the relationships and the support they've given us. So now I would say that it really, it's just neat. I, I find it more cool for the community now. So for someone who comes to Pantheon plus you for the first time, they're nervous to come on the air and then they see Joppa chatting. I think that that's a cool experience for, for the community there to be able to just be in the chat and chat with him and him answer questions or Ronick or sacred or whoever does. Um, even Ben Dean's been in there a few times. So I think that that's really cool for the community more than it is for us. If that makes sense. Yeah, oh, totally. I mean, as someone that is a fan of the show, it definitely is. I feel very pri privileged to have them join in and answer questions, and just be present. Definitely is. For Boon community and to the show, if you had a the opportunity to bring one of the devs onto the show, which dev would you want to bring on, or what would one would you want to bring on? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, let's just pretend that if that's the case, <laughs> um, Joppa's already been on, so I can exclude him, right? So we can I can exclude Joppa without being. Like, honestly, obviously, Jabba is just super fun to talk to. And I just love talking endlessly with him. So let's go ahead and we're going to remove Jabba because he's been on the show. So here's, here's my dream show. I mean, I'm not even lying. This is 100%. I want Justin Gerhardt on. Mm. Um, and I want to take a back seat. And I want Theric to talk to him about lore. And I want the two of them to um, interact, I'd, uh, help Theric come up with questions and be part of the show, but sort of in the background, um, you know, just kind of throwing my two cents in. I would like being that Theric has really gotten me into the lore. Yeah. I would just love to see those two talk about it and to be able to have in-depth conversations that I don't think any other host. And, and again, I'm not trying to throw shade on anybody, but I don't think any other host, including myself would be able to have the conversation that Theric would right. with Justin. And I think that it would be a huge service to the community and it would also be a huge service to Pantheon, I think, because of that level of depth they'll be able to go into and really make meaning of what's being said because Derek does a good job of making meaning of the lore. Right. So ultimately, like, I would love that show, take a back seat, I'll be the host, but those two will kind of do their thing. And I think it would be great because um, I'll, I'll be open and honest here. I've talked to Justin a few times and the number one thing he tells me is he, that he's a huge fan of Derek's work. And obviously, we know Theric's a huge fan of his, so I just would love to put those two together on a show. That would be absolutely. <laughs> we'll keep our fingers crossed that that, yeah, that yeah. happens. I mean, you've kind of answered this, but how responsive do you feel the devs are to the Pantheon community? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, the big thing is, is you're going to get a different answer from every single person here. Um, in my opinion, if a ton of the information that the community wants is out there, um, I, I would say that you have to sort of dig deep sometimes mm -hmm. to find the answers. Um, but at the same time they're there and they've been stated, right. um, whether it's on a stream or in a newsletter or in a chat, you know, a lot of the questions people have, have been answered. There is clarity there. Now, the problem is, is finding that is sometimes hard. So it's hard for me to say how great do I think VR has been communicating with the community? Because as a streamer, I would love to stream more. I would love to get my hands on the game more. I would like to do more interviews. You know, I've only done one interview in two years, but I'm also sort of not pushy about it. So it's probably my fault. Um, I would love to do more interviews. I would love to see more interviews for Basbium, for Nathan, for VOT. Mm. 
I would love to see um, more streaming for all those those people I mentioned and more. Um, you know, they've they've openly talked about how much they don't mind showing gray box now. Mm -hmm. We've seen a few different gray box streams. So let let some of these content creators that you can trust that are going to do the right thing for the game. And I don't mean, you know, um, just say what you want us to say, right. but aren't going to be critical just to be critical or use it as a meme, right? Like these trusted content creators, which there's a lot of in this community, you know, let them get out there, let them stream the game, let them show the testing. I mean, geez, they let me tell a story about it and people loved it. Imagine if that story also had stream in it, like had game footage. Right. So like, <laughs> there's so many people in the community that right now would say they're not doing a great job. I think they could do a better job. Mm -hmm. I think that if you have the resiliency to dig, you can find a lot of information. Yep. But I also understand that for glancers by that's not great. Like we don't want glancers by to just dig. Right. So, um, I think there could be some improvements. I think that the streamer program has been talked about for a long time. Let's make it happen. You know, there are, again, even if it's not me, like I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm not trying to be selfish here. Right. Even if it's not me, if just Bazgram gets to stream content, please let him. If just Nathan gets to do it, or there's a combination of us content creators, sure. people want to see this game and it's okay that it's in gray box. It's okay. If there's bugs, um, if you ever play a Bethesda game, it's got bugs after launch. So, <laughs> <laughs> Right. No, I'm not trying to knock on Bethesda. I like Bethesda, but like bugs aren't, it doesn't matter anymore. If you have the right people having fun with your content and your game and they're able to show it off and then heck even get a developer in doing that to just talk and interview while you're showing streaming footage. I just think it'll do a ton for them. I think that would be a great thing. For sure. Yeah, no, I, I'm a hundred percent agree with that. Um, I mean, I think the streams that the, they've let co carnage do have been tremendous. Because he's clearly such a fan, um, they've been amazing, and I think some of the other uh, well-established content creators to get that out there would be a real boon. Yeah, and on Co for a second, because you know I, I never followed Co before Pantheon, mm -hmm. and I do now. Um, and there's a lot of people in the community that are frustrated that he's getting these streams. Um, it's a great move on VR's part. Like Ko has an amazingly huge audience. And for yeah. people that don't know much about Ko and just see him on Pantheon streams, you know, like I'm not trying to wax poetic here, but you know, Ko is one of the most integrity filled streamers who earned his following through hard work. Mm. Like that guy streamed every day for like crazy amounts of days. I don't remember the total, but it's crazy. Like he put the effort in to build his community and he's done it in a sort of family friendly environment mm. and he's done it with positivity. And like, what more could you ask this day and age? Because most people who get famous or get big, like he is do it through negativity, bashing memes, being funny, being a character right. and Co's done it through being a genuinely good human being. And he has a huge following and he does that for VR out of the kindness and support that he has for them. So, like, why wouldn't you want to hit this massive audience that he has, <laughs> yeah. knowing you're doing it with someone who can represent community? Like, I get that maybe he's not the best MMO player in the world and people rip on him for that. But come on. I mean, whatever. You're seeing the game. It's fun, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I just seeing his enthusiasm in the game for me is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> He's genuine. He's genuine. Like right. when he makes faces and stuff and he's excited, he legitimately is. He's not putting on a show. Right. And I think that he, there's, there's two things when I look at streaming, there are people who bring new people in and that's co massive followings, big streamers. They're going to bring new eyes on the product. And then you need streamers on the inside that keep people engaged. And I think that's where people like Bazgrim, Nathan, VOT and myself can be there that once these people are brought in, if we're able to have enough content, we can keep people in. We can keep people engaged. People like Co do something that's invaluable. It's bringing people into the fold. They're going to do it 10 times the amount we can. And that's where those massive streamers are going to help. And then when they're moving on and doing the other games that they do as their multi-content streamers, like let give your community creators that have deserved the right, in my opinion, the ability to keep people in. And I think that that combination can work really well. Sure. Gears uh, quite a bit. Um, what mechanics? in pantheon do you feel are the most um divisive in the chat do you guys know what i'm going to say here anyone who knows me right <laughs> um i think people have already brought up the evil t word um 
Transmog is number one, yeah. in my opinion. I think the climbing system is another one that gets a lot of uh, divisive thought in the community. I think that the death penalty is another. Mm-hmm. And I would say those are probably the biggest three things that there's knowledge on. Well, there's no knowledge on Transmog, but the other two, there's knowledge out there. And people, I think, are trying to figure out if these systems are going to be something that is going to make them want to play Pantheon. And I think that there's just so many people out there that have varying opinions on those three, death, transmog, and climbing. Um, Limited action set, Drac just said, that's another great one. But that's calmed down a lot um, with getting rid of downranking spells and stuff like that. So um, I'd say those are the most divisive. And I think... You know, there's no transmog from what we know, so I'm really sad about that. But, um, you know, climbing and death, I think they're nailing. I think they're spot on, and, and it's surprising to me how divisive the climbing stuff is because it's pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good. Uh, are there any mechanics that you're worried about that they won't get right? I am, and I've voiced this concern quite a bit, and I've been reassured many times it's going to be okay. So I wouldn't say that I'm worried about it. I am just very curious, if that makes sense. And that is the ability to have epic raid encounters that we're accustomed to in a lot of games right now. Right. Where they're very challenging, they're mechanic heavy, they're phase heavy, there's a strategy. It's an, it's almost like storytelling. Um, like while you're doing the fight in a sense, like these epic battles, right? Especially for these enemies that you've story-wise been looking to take on for quite a while Mm. um i am afraid in an open contested environment if they can have these multi-tiered style fights that instancing really helps with you know like destructible environments phases just crazy things like that during an, an epic battle um i'm very curious to see how they can nail that without instancing Yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, for sure. I, I hear your concern. Um, again, switching gears um, and not not breaking NDIA at all because mm-hmm. you, know, it, you did get to put your story out there that you were in the shakeout. I'm curious, um, now that you have had a chance to play the game, do you think your play style will be different from how you thought you would approach the game before you had actually played it? Yeah, so... It's a very interesting question because um, anyone who uh, knows me knows that I I was a very hardcore player in WoW. Now, I ran a casual guild and I had no issue with casual players and players of all types. But when I say hardcore, I just meant I was logged in all the time. Um, I was striving hard to be as good as I could be. Mm. Not to brag, not to be better than people, just to be a leader who knew his stuff and could command respect through my performance, so to speak. Um, That was always super important to me. And then add on to that, I was on the game, what felt like 24 seven to be able to address guild issues and friends and and just, so I I super hardcore played that way. And when we look at Pantheon, I'm gonna be on a lot still, but the difference is that with Pantheon, um, I wanted to take the game at a slower pace, right? So that was one of my big goals. Like I I don't wanna rush to level. Um, I want to explore more often. Um, I want to just take everything in and maybe go into the perception system, right? So my fear is now that I've played two things. One, I want to play a rogue, right? Because a rogue plays into everything I just said. Yeah. Stealth, dangerous world, right? Like we'll talk about that later too. But so playing a tank, and again, it's not under NDA because luckily with them letting me tell my story, I there's a few things in the NDA I don't have to be as protective on right like the fact that i'm testing and that i did um but playing a dire lord it just brought back all the feels of tanking and a majority of my mmo career i've tanked Uh and there's just this this natural thing that i love leading a group like okay everybody stand here i'm gonna pull back so and so you're my off tank grab the left one three two one pull you know just this extreme cohesive strategy that i love to run as a tank Uh um so the interesting thing is, is now that I've played a tank a little bit because of how dangerous it is, it's so much more enthralling, right? Like being a tank in a dangerous game that's difficult content that requires a lot of that safety and strategy. It's, 
it's even more tempting now because, <laughs> and, and, and I'm not a dire Lord. I'm, I'm not a dire Lord at heart. I'm a warrior hands down if I play tank, but it was really fun to play it. So I'm really hoping that I'm, st- I'm still going to stick with rogue. That's where I want to be. Uh-huh. Um, but I really hope that there's still a lot of that group um, leadership capability as a rogue. Uh, and hopefully we're going to see that soon because um, the news did come out that rogue and wizard are going to be the next classes that we see in pre-alpha testing, which is great. So um, I'm a rogue at heart. That's what I want to play. Uh, I want to stealth around. I want to explore the world. But I'll tell you, even in playtesting, I was like, we need to level. We need to level. We need to level. Like that <laughs> natural progression feeling within me, it was, it was so hard to fight off. Like even Theric was like kind of like trying to, come on, man, let's just go explore. And I'm like, oh, I just want to stay here and get loot. But um, <laughs> so Theric's going to help me through that, I guess. So. All right. <laughs> so question, it's something funny is um, uh, Zelik just said rogues can't lead. Their job is in the shadows. I don't know if you're familiar with this. Have you um, have you seen what the rogues are referred to as in Pantheon? Like no. the, the terminology? Uh-uh. So this is really cool. They're they're called the faceless affairs of nations. I love that. I think that's one of the coolest things in the world. Faceless affairs of nations. So yes, their job is in the shadow, but they're they're dictating, right? Like they're dictating what's going on. I like that. <laughs> uh, makes me think of this great series called the Foreigner series, where there's an assassins guild. Uh, there's no war on this world because the assassins are hired to take care of any disagreements between people. So that that's the rogue role in Pantheon. Let's hope. I, I desperately want to play a rogue. I desperately want to take my time. <sighs> we'll see. <laughs> well, we'll that's see. the other thing that I'm pretty amazed about Pantheon. It's like every time we learn more about any particular class, it becomes very exciting and intriguing. <laughs> you know, it makes it very hard to choose uh, what what role to go. Um, along those lines, is there something that you've learned uh, or know about um, the rogue in Pantheon that has you especially excited about the class, other than you uh, play a rogue? Yeah, so, you know... Um there was a stream a while back. It was the Amber Fate stream and Joppa actually got into detail about reworking the entirety of the rogues um, stealth system. And it's something that a lot of people didn't pick up on. Like that's another one of those hidden gems, right? Like if you know where it's at, there's a lot of info there. Right. Um, But um, the thing about the rogue that I'm really getting into is that they're not so much digging into the EverQuest stealth mechanics, which listen guys, as much as you may love EverQuest till the end of your life, (laughs) <laughs> and that's fine because I love EverQuest too. The rogue stealth mechanics were freaking awful. Like having to sneak and hide and make sure they both work and then you can move. It was awful, 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 awful. Um, the best two games that had rogue stealth without a doubt was was WoW, sorry, community, and <laughs> D&D Online. And it, I feel like Pantheon has adjusted their stealth system. And that's one of those things where I talked about before earlier in the show, right? Like, there's things that need to be modernized and not the modern MMO term that's negative, but modernized, like technologies advanced, thought process advanced. People have played games. There's things that make more sense now. Right. I think that the rogue stealth going into the way they have it now, more being aligned to like how it works in WoW and DDO is awesome. And I am 100% on board with the, how that rogue stealth is going to be. I cannot wait to just... Me and Bronson, who's another big rogue fan, all we want to do, we want to have some stream nights where we just stealth naked and see how far we can get. <laughs> like, so we don't lose any gear. We'll lose a ton of experience. Like, oh, look, there he is. Like, maybe we'll, like, get to, like, right when we level. Like, so that when we're losing experience, it's not a big deal. <laughs> but, like, to, like, just go and be like, how far into this place can we get stealth? Like, let's do this, right? I had two rogues working together to distract and get around stuff and climb. Oh, that sounds like so much fun to me. And granted, we're going to lose experience and die all the time. But man, would that be fun? And I think it'd be fun to watch. Yeah. Like, I think that would be a fun <laughs> stream to watch. Like, people just laughing at us dying and trying to climb our way through things. Um, but, you know, that's probably the thing that I'm most excited for. And the second part of Rogue I'm really excited for is I want to see where the alchemy side of it goes. So 
um, you know, there's going to be alchemy as a crafting profession, but then there's going to be like this toxicity or um, toxicology mm. that's going to be built into the rogue class. So I'm very excited to see how deep that goes. Like, what does that look like? Is it an intuitive system? Do you have to learn stuff? Um, so those two systems, just I want to experiment with the stealth and I want to see how tox toxicology works. Excellent. Cool. So what's Pantheon? And, and Zelik said that I want to drop people from ropes. I totally right. want to drop people from ropes. <laughs> like, no joke. Like, I can't wait to be in one of those moments because I got to do it randomly. I can't just do it all the time um, where I'm just dropping people from ropes. Totally into that. <laughs> Definitely be very careful grouping with you. <laughs> Especially elves. If you're an elf, careful. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be a halfling, so at least that regard <laughs> should be okay. <laughs> yeah, you'll be all right. <laughs> so, uh, once the game launches, uh, do you plan on continuing the Pantheon Plus U show? And Yes, um, so Theric and I have talked about that quite a bit. You know, yeah. like, do we keep doing the Rewind? Do we keep doing Pantheon Plus U? What do content videos look like? You know, obviously, I think that, like, a once-a-month Pantheon Plus U, like an update show, Mm -hmm. would probably be really good. Like talk about what's updated, talk about some adventures. I think that that could work really well, but I think that what you'll see is weekly streaming, you know, like we're, I'm going to stream the hell out of Pantheon. Right. I want uh, people who want to be a part of our adventures and see the crazy stuff we go through. I want people to see, like, I want people to have insight into our guild because, and, and I know we're going to talk about that, but I want people to kind of see what we're trying to do with this guild and maybe encourage people to join. So like, I'm really excited to do a lot of streaming. And that's going to be a lot of what you see on Twitch. Because um, right now, all you see on Twitch is Pantheon Plus U. And then we do some game nights just for fun. Um, but I think that what you'll you'll find that our Twitch channel is going to be mainly gameplay stream. Um, but I would say that we still probably should do like a monthly update, state of the game, what's going on, you know, updates or like patch improvements, patch notes, stuff like that that are important to keep the community up to date. And then the Rewind show, I'm sure, like, I don't know, I love it. It is a really good time. So mm -hmm. I probably would want to keep doing that, but we may have to look at doing different types of segments, stuff like that. Right. That's what's really nice about that show is we've we've come up with a bunch of different segments. And that's, guys, that's Theric's brainchild 110%. He created how we do it. He created the distribution model. He created the documents we use to, to script the show. And, you know, like, he's just done a crazy, amazing job with putting that show together. And um, it's a blast to do. Like, it's so much fun that I want to keep doing it. So it's just about, like, the segments being relevant to the game being out and what's going on. Excellent. Yeah. Well, um, so that leads me really easily into, you know, the pan the, the plus guild that you've created. Um, why? So did you decide to do that? Create the guild? <laughs> Yeah, so anybody who knows me knows that for about a year and a half, I've been saying very strictly that I do not want to run a guild. I don't have time as a content creator. Um, I just want to be a team player. I joined another guild that's been around for a long time. Uh, and by the way, I love them to death. Still no issues with them. But a lot of people um, kept saying, like, are you going to make a guild? Are you going to make a guild? Are you going to make a guild? And, and you know what the biggest part of being in that other guild was? Is I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to play with Theric, with, with Drac. Um, with people that I'm really tight with in the community. Right. And that's when I really started to say like, man, like if I can't have adventures with Theric, like I'm not going to have fun. Like I'm really looking forward to that. And that was probably the first step. And Theric's not the only one, but that's a big part of it. Right. Um, so, you know, we started talking one night about, is this a possibility? Could we do this? And you know, the way we've run the guilds in the past, it's been a team effort. So you know, if we have the right officer group, which we do, I mean, we just had a guild meeting and I was, I didn't even have to help any prep. Like everybody just took pieces and then we chalked and chatted. And then we had people telling stories like, gosh, I wish, I wish you, people who weren't part of the guild could have just heard about the bonding that we did. Like people just telling their stories. It was, oh my gosh, it was so <laughs> fun. We learned so much about the community and so much about our guild and it's stuff like that. Like the end of the day, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I have a very strong opinion on the treatment of people, the culture of a guild, doing the right thing. And and I know, and and I've been told this a hundred times, even by the guild I was in before, because again, I'm really close with them still. That I, I'm not just going to be able to be a member, and I'm going to have too much of an opinion on decisions, <laughs> and and I'm going to want to say and. 
And, you know, with our group, I think that we're going to have a really good team of people who think differently from one another right. and can drive community. Because our the point of our guild is simple. We want to be a positive community impacting guild on the server world. Um, and that's tough. Like we, if you see our guild plus, we want you to know that there's integrity there that will help that we can possibly thwart some of those evil guilds out there. Like like we're really going to take this seriously and we're trying to build a community that's going to be able to do that. It's, it's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard to, to maintain civility, to maintain integrity and do the right things all the time. But that's what we're really pushing to do. So going back to more of the Pantheon playstyle, are there any particular me mechanics that you're really, really looking forward to or excited about in the game? Yeah, you know, um, I would probably say I'm, I'm really into the Acclamations climate system. Uh -huh. um, I think that that's going to be really neat. Um, I would say that I'm really into the climbing now. You know, kind of going into that whole wanting to be a rogue and explore thing. The little bit I got to taste of that, it's um, <laughs> it's not a gimmick, guys. It was an absolute freaking blast to climb and search and discover things and see things and have views that were amazing. Um, definitely into that. Um, <clears throat> what race do you plan on playing? Good question. So I was torn when I first started, I was going to be a halfling. And then I got torn into maybe being a dark mare. Cause I like their classes mm. or their, uh, their, the race look and like some of the new images it got out. And then I started to just default to like, ah, maybe I should just play a human. Like I've played a lot of humans in games and, uh, getting a lot of shout outs for elf. I just, yeah, I see that <laughs> not playing an elf. That's for sure. Could you imagine if, like, day one, Minus is an elf druid? <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> People's heads would explode. Um, no, so, so um, I just, I've been jumping back and forth a lot, and um, I made a halfling um, for that test, and they're awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm back on the halfling. Um, I'm back on the halfling train. So probably halfling. I'd say 90% halfling. So the last, uh, this has been a really fantastic uh, chat. I wanted to know what is your biggest takeaway from being involved with the Pantheon community as a whole? Yeah. It's the diversity, man. Like the, the commonality, the overarching commonality of diversity, which is probably the most contradicting statement I could ever make. Um. If we strip all the arguing and we strip the debates and we strip some of the line in the sands that some of us have, at the end of the day, like we're so like we're, we're as a community, there's just there's so many bonding things there, like storytelling and friendships and people who have met their wives, you know, people who've had relationships through these games, people that have gotten through depression or difficult times because of MMORPGs. Like when we when we strip aside our competitive nature to win a debate or an argument or uh, talk about a mechanic that we want to talk about, when we strip that all away, I think that um, there's just such a beautiful group of stories and individuals that it's it's an amazing community. It's really amazing. Um, I wish more people could could let their guard down and tell their stories a little bit more. I do, and I wish that more people would be receptive to those stories. Right and understand that we're going to have a chance to make some new ones. And I think that that's probably the biggest piece of being in the community. And I, and I got to be honest, I'm you know, super fortunate to, to be able to have conversations with someone like Joppa. Two years ago, did I ever think I'd be able to talk to a game developer of a game I'm most excited about? No, definitely not. Um, and their ability to, and I'm not the only one, um, but their ability to have a conversation with me and treat me as a valued community member. Um, just further pushes me to want to do more for the community and mm -hmm. to do to to get my voice out there and to to build community and get people to be more of teams more of a team instead of this warring faction so to speak right. um so that's probably my biggest thing
Well, actually, I lied. One last question. Is there anything that we haven't talked about or anything you'd like to bring up? Um, kind of the mic is yours. <laughs> if you, yeah, you know, I mean, if I had to give a message out there that anybody would care to listen to again, it's just like, don't mistake Pantheon Plus's like super excitement between Drac, myself, Theric, Fell, um, and everyone else behind the scenes that you guys don't really get to see. Don't mistake our sense of excitement, pride, positivity. Don't mistake that for like a, a breach of integrity. Like mm. we're serious when we say these things. Like we're enjoying this. We enjoy the community. Um, you know, we will be critical when we need to be. Um, we will put ideas out there that are you know, not popular in the community if we believe in them. Um, you know, the whole thing is, is it's, we understand the frustration. We understand that people are confused about some of the things they're seeing. We understand that it's hard sometimes to dig for the information you want. Mm. We understand that you're not always going to be a fan of us, but that's okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> At the end of the day, like I said, there's a lot more commonality between all of us in the Pantheon community than there is diversity, like negative diversity. Right. And the diversity we do have should actually be used to strengthen us. Awesome. Yeah. I hope that um, you know, as we learn more and some people's concerns are addressed, that we'll be able to continue to build that. And I do believe that. So. Right on. Well, again, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Um, was just a delight. I really appreciate it. And I want to shout out to the community for showing up and having such a lively uh, chat. I'm sorry I wasn't able to <laughs> so focused on what Minus was saying, not not interacting with you guys as much, but I um, really appreciate you showing up and, and participating. It's been a really pleasurable evening. So thank you all. Thank you, Minus. And uh, we will be streaming again in two weeks. I'll be having uh, Tech Ninja on, um, talking about fan, more fan fiction, which is going to be a, another a delightful talk. So thank you all again. Thank you, Minus. And uh, we'll, we'll see you all hopefully in two weeks. Thanks for having me on, man. Oh, Appreciate you it. bet. My pleasure.